Hey everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So today we have uh, someone with us who is a master at Code Forces, who is a student of uh, Delhi Technological University, which was previously known as Delhi College of Engineering, and he is also an incoming engineer at Code Nation. So uh, let's hear it from him. So Sajan, can you please uh, tell everyone about your experience of uh, Code Nation? Like, what was the interview process? How many rounds uh, did you have? Or was it on campus? Was it off campus? What is the difficulties of the problems that were asked to you compared to other companies? Hi. So for coordination, my process was on campus, and it was on campus. The company came for intern hiring, and uh, the first round was an online coding round, which involved three questions of um, code for say div two D, div two E, div two C level, and uh, basically. Uh, you had to solve two out of these three questions to qualify for the interview rounds, and the interview rounds were uh, there were three interview rounds. The first interview round was about the projects and the internship that the student has done, and uh, it mainly focused on my internship. But I had done two to three internships prior to coordination, and uh, it was mainly focused on what were the challenges that faced there, what was the work kind there, and uh, what all did I learn over there? So it was basically focusing on my projects and internships. And uh, the second round was about the data structures and algorithms. So in this round, the questions were easier than the online round. Uh, they were pretty standard questions, and uh, uh, one or two questions were um, something which you can find on Code Forces as well. So uh, it was uh, pretty decent if you are uh, good with problem solving. It won't be much of a difficulty for you. To tackle those problems, they were pretty standard. And uh, the third round was more about system design and abstract problem solving. So I think if you have gone through the videos of uh, Gaurav Sain or Rachije, then I believe that you would be good with uh, system design, and uh, that is enough to tackle that round. So I think the main focus for getting into co coordination was clearing that online round, which involved the most difficult questions. So I believe if someone is good in competitive programming, then that should not be a difficulty for them. Okay, so Sajan, like how many people did appear from uh, DTU for this coding round? And at the end, how many did back the offer? Can you give us some insights? It was, yeah, it was, it was open for, I guess, all the branches related to computers. So approximately 500 to 600 students did appear since it was, uh, it was a uh, first week company. And uh, there were four offers that were given, so th that's the ratio. Okay, so so I guess you went for a two months internship, and after that you are converted to like you are offered a full time offer from the inside, right? Yeah. So exactly. can can you please uh, share something like how difficult was the internship? Like like a lot of people have this doubt that if they clear the internship interview and will they be able to perform in the internship or not so can you please explain us like how difficult is it for a competitive programmer to excel in this uh, software development field yeah it was first of all pretty much different than what competitive programmers are used to working with so you had to work with real life problems which is completely opposite to what you do in competitive programming so i believe that was a challenge over there but uh, having done some previous internships I did not feel that it was very much different, but the kind of work that they were doing, the challenging problems uh, that were thrown to the interns, and they, they were completely being independent, just a mentor for their support. So I think it was it was a difficult process to tackle those problems, but I believe in the end, um, if you are good with problem solving, those, those skills did help me in tackling that internship. So my project was basically focused on compiler design and uh, related stuff. So um, I think it was a bit of uh, thinking, like how do I implement this efficiently? So there I feel uh, algorithms which were um, related to competitive programming, like graph algorithm, handling, recursion, etc. So these came into help, and uh, I think that this helped me uh, get that offer. Okay. So uh, a myth uh, goes around in India that like competitive programmers can only crack interviews. Like wh what insights will you give into this? Like is it uh, because you are from such a college that every company visits your college? So like is it that that a guy who hasn't done competitive programming can also crack Amazon, Microsoft or other companies? Yeah, I don't think that competitive programming is a must thing, uh, thing, a must thing skill to have for an uh, interview. 
interview, but I do believe that computer programming helps you crack that online round. So if you see most of the interviews focus on classical problems and the traditional problems like uh, merging intervals or all those standard problems that are there on Geeks for Geeks, Deep Code interview bit. But to reach that round, you need to clear that online round hurdle. So that hurdle, I believe that competitive programming gives you an edge because you have that speed to solve those problems fast. So really competitive programming helps us in that. But given the fact, I believe that there are many companies whose online rounds are also based on um, normal traditional problems or just variations of it. Like many tech giants as well, like Amazon and Microsoft, they, they tend to focus on um, a difficult MCQ set than coding questions. So I believe if you have those skills, then competitive programming is not a must for you. But I believe if you are good with it, then it will surely help you. Okay. So yes, you are a master at code forces, and I believe that there are hardly around, I guess, eighty to ninety masters in India. So like, how tough it is to reach a master level at code forces? Can you give some insights into it? Like, what should you need? Because I've seen your graph, and you have hardly taken around very less contests to get into a master level. So please give us some insights, like how to get in, how to become a master. So for me, um, I believe I did not participate in a lot of live contests. But um, at the same time, I was practicing the problem set. I was practicing uh, topic wise. So I believe that that did help me. But after doing it for a year or so, I was stuck at a rating of around eighteen hundred or seventeen hundred fifty, and I was stuck there for around six to seven months. So I believe that uh, that did demotivate me a bit. So I did not uh, take up live contests after it. Which, which I believe you should not do, and uh, you should keep uh, participating. But I did participate virtually a lot in those six months. I gave approximately every day or two. I used to participate in a virtual contest, and because I had figured out that the thing that was stopping me from partic- uh, from doing well in those contests was that I was struggling a bit with my speed. My accuracy was good, and uh, I was able to solve those problems after the contest if I spent time on it. But I believe that I need to develop that speed, and for that speed, I believe that practicing in a right way is important. So you don't need to practice topic-wise to increase speed. You need you need to have a something of a speed run or something which is solve multiple problems in an hour or something. And uh, for that, I believe virtual contest does help you a lot because you don't have that burden of time. My rating will go down or something, and you can uh, peacefully participate in a contest and. Uh, The environment is pretty much the same in a virtual contest, so it did help me. The virtual contest did help me improve my speed and accuracy was uh, also increased. Okay, now since I've known you closely for many years, like for the people who do not know, I've been knowing Sajjan from around I guess three years. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. So we know each other from three years. So I've seen you closely, and I feel that you're really good at dynamic programming. Now this is the topic I think which ninety percent of the world suffers at. Dynamic programming. So, like, uh, can you give some tips and tricks? Like, should we follow iterative DP? Should we do recursive DP? Or from where should you learn about dynamic programming? So, personally, I have done dynamic programming when I was in when I was in my first year. I I practiced from geeks for geeks. I used to go through the easy and intermediate problem set that they had for dynamic programming. I used to go through those articles and try to come up with the uh, recurrences myself. But after a time, I believe that it was not helping me solve a new problem, which is exactly the case with dynamic programming. You you see a problem, and the next problem is totally different. You need to come up with a different recurrence, and you need to figure out the sub problems. So I had to work a bit on my recursion skills because. Uh, To improve your dynamic programming, you need to be good at recursion. You need to think recursively. You need to think about the sub problems. So, I think uh, improving your recursion does help you improving the dynamic programming skills. And after that, I I practice from Hackerth and um, Codeforces. And um, Codeforces is pretty good for dynamic programming. You can solve those C D E problems and with the new rating system that they have for problem rating. uh you can target that the target rating that you have in mind you can go for that and practice those problems for each and every topic and for topic wise practice in general i believe not only for dynamic programming in for any topic in general 
A2OJ is a pretty good tool you can use. They have a pretty exhaustive list of problems from various sites like Spurge, Hacker Earth, and um, Code, Code Forces, and it helps you keep in track like how much you have solved. And so A2OJ is pretty good for the problem set point of view, and then you can practice it on the respective sites. And, and as far as the iterative and recursive DP is concerned, I feel initially a beginner should start off with a recursive DP. It, it helps you develop your thinking. And with time to increase speed, iterative DP is the best way. Okay. So now, since you're from DTU, you must have seen people like uh, practicing a lot before one or two months before the companies come up. So you must have seen people uh, preparing from GFG lead code. Now, GFG is such a vast ocean. Like there are a lot of questions. How do people figure out problems from GFG or lead code to practice and then they crack Amazon, Microsoft and all other top giants? So can you give us an insight about that? Yeah, I believe for Geeks for Geeks, uh, you can just go to the practice website and then you can look at the tracks that they have for problems. So, they are, the, the problems are in company-wise, they can be sorted by difficulty order. So, it's a pretty good list over there. So, I don't believe that you can target to solve the whole article list and you can go through every each and every article because it is practically impossible. So, I believe that if you do the practice with practice tracks like the placement tracks or the must must do 300 problems of amazon or something like that it gets you used to all the classical problems that are asked in the interview so just just look out for those those links and those uh, questions that are there on those tracks and you will be good to go. okay now one of the questions that one of the viewer wants to ask that foreign studies are like let's say masters in us or something like that or let's say gate so would you prefer someone who has cracked product based companies or something like that to have a foreign studies and if yes what are the advantages of that i mean going forward for foreign studies i have a couple of my friends who have got selected in foreign universities even after being good at competitive programming and cracking decent companies but I believe it's a personal choice like what you need to do after getting a job. Some people do want to go into research and um, other other things. So I think master's does help you in that. Also, it always helps you boosting your skills. So probably the last question for today. Uh, that is a lot of people uh, tend to move away from coachship after a while. Like you have done it and I've also done it, right? So why why is that people start off with coachship and uh, apparently move from that and I've also heard that code chef's ratings are not that credible enough compared to code forces. So can you uh, just give some insights about this? So uh, initially my target with solving problems at code chef was to get used to problem solving and the mindset you need to develop while solving problems. So I believe the long challenges over there, they are the best uh, thing that you can have to improve that mindset. And you can know various algorithms that you otherwise would not have studied. So something like most algorithm on trees. I I had seen a question in the recent long challenges based on that. So it's not something that you would uh, search up as an algorithm that you might want to study unless you have seen a problem in it. And uh, this is not an algorithm which will most probably come in a short contest. So a long contest helps you know better algorithms, more efficient algorithm, more efficient ways to implement things. So I think for a beginner, a long challenge, doing long challenges is must. And um, after that, practicing on short contests, you can either practice a code code chef or a code forces. Uh, personally, I prefer code forces because many of my seniors told me that code forces was better in in terms of problem quality and in terms of the, the ratings over there did not get. Uh, if you see a code chef after a while, the ratings. The rating system over there, everybody is a five star over there. So it is a lot, lot less reliable than Code Forces. So Code Forces was a better option in that. You can you can get a better assessment of your skills. So yeah, that that was it from this interview from uh, Satan. So all the best for your future. So probably we'll meet soon. Thank you.